We're here today to talk about lighting indoors in dark situations. And actually, this is the best possible scenario for lighting for video. Why? Because we don't have light coming through windows. There's no daylight to contend with. We don't have other lights on in the room. We turn off all the lights and the only light that we're going to introduce into our scene is going to be from the lamps that we set up. Well, it's not necessary to have a professional three light kit to light for video. We're using one today to demonstrate the techniques that you need to know to light well indoors. A typical light kit includes some tools that are essential for good lighting. It includes at least three lamps, one to use for your key, your fill, and your backlight. Occasionally it will add a fourth that you can use to light your set, like we'll be doing today. There are stands for these lamps to mount on that you can raise them to several feet off the ground or lower them down near the floor. And barn doors, which allow you to control spill light. You'll also find that the typical kit includes gels for color correction or for effect and diffusion material to soften the brightness of, uh, of a harsh light. The first light in our three lamp configuration is our key light. The key light is the primary light source in any three light setup. In any setup for that matter. The key light is the, the brightest of all the lights and it provides the direction for the source light in our setup. We're going to position the key light several feet above the head of our subject, usually three or four feet higher than the subject's head, so that it shines down on the subject at about a 35 or 40 degree angle. This is going to provide a, a natural direction for our key light. If you think about the real world, most light sources come from above our heads. The lights in the ceiling of a building or the sun outside. We want to mimic this in the positioning of our key light. The second lamp in our three-point lighting configuration is called the fill light. The fill light's entire job is to soften shadows that are cast by the key. If these lights are of equal intensity as far as wattage goes, we want to find a way to soften that key light. We either need to move it farther away or we need to diffuse it with an umbrella or with some diffusion material so that the light that comes from the fill just softens the shadows that are cast by the key light. The third and final light in a three-point lighting configuration is the backlight. It's sometimes called the hair light. The backlight, the hair light, we want to be a bright, hot light that shines on the head and shoulders of our subject. Its job is to provide separation from the subject and the background. You can see before we turn this light on, although we have a very nice looking key light and a nice looking fill light, the scene looks flat. When we add the hair light, when we add the backlight, you're going to see how the subject pops out from that background and it adds that extra dimension that our scene really needs. Well now we've successfully positioned our key light, our fill light, and our backlight, and our subject is looking very, very nice on camera. But what we'd like to do is add a little splash of color to the scene to just finish it off. What we're going to do is add a fourth lamp with a colored gel. And we'll, by shining the light through the gel onto our gray backdrop, we can make the scene any color we like, maybe purple, green, or blue. In our case, we tried blue, and I think it looks fabulous. As we said earlier, you don't have to have a professional lighting kit to pull off this kind of lighting. The most important thing is how it looks to the camera. When you look at our two shots side by side from the camera's point of view, it's difficult to tell the difference because the color of the lights is so closely matched with our Gorilla Tools and with our professional kits. Some skillful use of Gorilla Tools can net you incredible results and save you a lot of money. Lighting in the studio is actually relatively easy since we have great control over the lamps in the studio. However, when we go on location and shoot, say, in someone's home or their office, we tend to throw out all those rules and just start shooting. Nevertheless, even shooting during the daytime, there are at least two challenges that present themselves to us as we're shooting. They are light intensity and color temperature. Let's tackle the problem of light intensity first. Even during the daytime, sometimes a room is simply too dark to give you a good exposure right away. The first thing you can do is go to manual iris control and begin opening the iris until you get a good exposure. If this alone doesn't brighten the picture enough, try slowing down the shutter speed. This will also brighten the picture. But be aware, however, in certain circumstances, 
it might give you a telltale motion blur. You can do both of these things with your camera alone to give you a better exposure. A large window in the room is a problem that you can actually turn to your own advantage. If your subject is sitting right in front of the window, typically her face will appear too dark. Now you can use a reflector to bounce some of that sunlight back into her face, but a better solution is to turn your subject so that the window is to one side. Now you can use the sunlight as your key light. Put a reflector on the other side of your subject to fill out those harsh shadows, make them soft, and you have an attractive picture. You probably have all the equipment you need already at your disposal. Look around the room to find the lamps that are already there. Now you can take greatest advantage of those lamps if you first replace their bulbs with the highest wattage bulbs that they can handle. Second, remove the lampshades. This will definitely increase the light intensity. If you find that the light is too harsh, back the light away from your talent to soften the light. Also, you can use a reflector from the other side of the talent's face to fill the shadows. If you need to bring in higher wattage lamps, be careful not to overload the electrical circuits. Check the circuit breakers to see which circuits control which plugs, then disperse the load accordingly. Now, if you don't have many circuits available to you, you may need to use only one bright lamp. But in many cases, you'll find that the room you're in has a white ceiling. You can take the bright lamp and point it at that ceiling to create a bright but soft light that will flood the whole area. Now let's deal with the problem of color temperature. The challenge here is to get natural looking colors in our picture while dealing with competing colors coming from the sunlight, which is relatively blue, and the incandescent lights in the room, which is relatively orange. Now the first thing we can do is take off the automatic white balance control on the camera. Go to manual. Now place a white card directly in front of your talent, catching the light that's falling on your talent. Set your white balance to that card. Another thing you can do is exclude the sunlight from the room entirely. Do this by hanging a dark curtain or at least closing the blinds. Now everything that's left in the room is light of the same color temperature, namely the light coming from the incandescent bulbs. Take out that white card and set the white balance to that. Now another way to go is to let the sunlight illuminate your subject and balance the color of your lamp to the sunlight. You can do this by placing a blue gel over the lamp. If we take just a couple of minutes, we can get shots on location to look just as good as those we take in the studio.